Hey guys, what's up, it's Alex, so welcome back to the second episode of the wine series How to make fucked fabulous fresh fun freaking wine Today's gonna be all about grapes, let's begin In this series I'm sharing my whole experience about wine making at home From fresh grapes all the way to beautiful wine And using only cheap and basic equipment of course, along the way, I will share fun facts and useful tips. Whether you want to make wine or you just want to drink it, let's be honest, remember to always act safely and responsibly. First off, not all grapes are equal in terms of winemaking. No, in fact, they are divided into two categories. Table grapes are the ones you know from your local grocery store. They are larger, plumpier, often seedless. They have a nice pulp, but a thin skin. Inside, it's mild in terms of acidity and sweetness. Wine grapes, on the other hand, are smaller, they have plenty seeds, uh, a thicker skin, more juices, but fewer pulp. Inside, they are all sweet, very sweet, and also way more acidic than table grapes. They also got tannins, you know, that dryness at the back of the mouth. And these are the ones you need to start winemaking. Problem is, wine grapes are not readily available to the public. Uh, if you know someone, maybe you can ask a winemaker if he wants to sell you some. At the end, it didn't work out for me. Luckily for us, a few varieties are both table and wine grapes. I happen to know two of them, the white chasselas and the black musca. If you know any other variety that belongs to the two groups, please share them uh, in the comments below. It's gonna be super useful for everyone. Now a fun fact. Did you know that uh, the wine colors mostly comes from the skin, not the pulp? So it means that black grapes can produce uh, red wine using the skin or white wine, not using the skin, but white grapes can only produce white wine. <laughs> I think that's interesting. With that in mind, I'm going for black muscat. I'm getting 10 kilos of those beautiful, small but sweet and very fragrant grapes. And now, super important, please pay a lot of attention to what you buy as you're gonna spend the next few months making wine. A smooth skin, no wrinkles, nothing rotten, you know, an intense and uniform color and fresh and flexible green stems. So I am driving back to the studio. The reason why I chose to make wine in September is that it's full season, so it's rather cheap. 2.49 euros a kilo. It's coming from the Mont Ventoux, which is in the south of France, in the Rhone Valley. I can't wait to start. It's never 100% sure it's gonna work. But if I don't try, then it's 100% sure I'm gonna fail. <laughs> okay, let's give it a wash. Discard the stems and place the fruits in a bucket. Remember to always clean and sanitize any equipment before and after use. As we want the juice to be as intense as possible, remove any excess water. I initially and genuinely thought that I could use uh, my bare feet to stomp those grapes. The problem is this. Way too big to fit in those narrow buckets. So instead, I'm using my hands and it works just fine. Make sure you leave no grain uncrushed. It's even relaxing in some ways. Oh la la, it must have been the most delightful and relaxing massage for the feet. And never mind. That liquid with the seeds and the skins is called a wine must. Before we move on to the next step, which is the alcoholic fermentation, we need to make sure that the coast is clear. To avoid any random bacteria development that could turn our beautiful wine to be into an expensive vinegar, we need to add a preserving agent. The most common is called sulfite. You might be familiar with them as you can find contains sulfite on the bottom of labels on bottles of wine. It can be bought as a powder or under the form of Camden tablets. With about 10 kilos of wine must, I am using uh, 600 milligrams of metabisulfite. 
But if you want to make it extra safe, you can go up to 1200 milligrams. Of course, I will share all the details and the calculus in the description box down below. Make sure to carefully incorporate the sulfite into the wine must by nicely mixing it. And now we need to wait. I mean, not long, but at least one day before we move on to the next step, uh, before we add yeast to that uh, wine must, because otherwise we would just kill them with all the sulfite we did put in our wine must. Well guys, that's it for the second episode of the wine making series. Uh, if you like this project, if you enjoy the ride, then please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and to share that over all your social medias using the hashtag spread it like butter and also by tagging me in so that I can see anything you post. If you want to go the extra mile, if you want to support my work, I mean financially, then bless you, you can go and check out my Patreon page. Last people click subscribe because I make new videos every week. You know, it's always about food, it's always about pushing further. This time I'm making wine. Who knows what I'm gonna do next? The next episode will be a lot of fun, but not, sadly, in a safe way. Anyway, take care, bye-bye, salut. -bye.